we can find the determinant of a matrix using the cofactor method, which takes a long time. We can find determinants more efficiently using row linearity and Euclidean elimination. Since the determinant is linear in the rows, suppose we add a multiple of one row of a matrix to another. So remember, concrete doesn't hurt. So let's imagine our matrix being given by presenting its row vectors, and let's say we add a multiple of row 1 to R2. Then our matrix becomes... Now by the linearity property of the determinant, the determinant of this new matrix is the sum of the determinants of two other matrices, namely... Now in this first matrix, we have one row multiplied by a constant and so we can remove a constant factor from our determinant. But now this matrix has two identical rows, so its determinant is zero. And what this means is that the matrix produced by adding a multiple of one row to another has the same determinant as the original matrix. And this suggests a strategy for computing the determinant. Row reduce, and if possible, avoid switching rows or multiplying a row by a constant other than negative 1. This will lead to a triangular matrix, whose determinant will be the product of the entries along the main diagonal. This approach works best if we have a way of row reducing that avoids multiplying rows by a constant. So we'll use Euclidean elimination. So to find the determinant of this matrix, we note that the leading coefficient of the first row is smaller than the leading coefficient of the second and third row, so we'll subtract the first row multiple times from the second and third row to get. Now we can subtract the second row from the first to get a 1 in the leading position. And now the leading coefficient of the first row is 1, so we'll use the first row and eliminate the entries below the pivot. And since we didn't switch any rows or multiply a row by a constant, the determinant of the original matrix is the same as the determinant of the matrix produced after the row operations. So it's convenient if the leading coefficient of a row is non-negative. So let's remove a factor of negative 1 from rows 2 and 3. Now we'll continue our row reduction. So in our second row, the leading coefficient is actually greater than the coefficient of the third row. So we'll subtract the third row from the second. Now the leading coefficient of the second row is smaller, so we'll subtract it four times from the third row. The leading coefficient of the third row is smaller, so we'll subtract it from the second row, which makes our leading coefficient 1, so now we can use the second row to eliminate the entries below the pivot. And again, because we didn't switch any rows and we didn't multiply a row by a constant, the determinant of the new matrix is the same as the determinant of the original matrix. And this gives us a triangular matrix, and we can find the determinant by multiplying the entries along the main diagonal. And we could do the same thing even if our matrices are larger. So let's find the determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix. So we can row reduce. Our leading coefficient in the first row is smaller than the leading coefficient in the third row, so we'll subtract the first row from the third. The leading coefficient in the first row is now the greatest in the column, so we'll subtract the second row from the first. which gives us a pivot of 1, which we can use to clear out the entries below the pivot. And since we didn't switch any rows or multiply a row by a constant, the determinant of the original matrix is the same as the determinant of the matrix produced after the row operations. 
the leading coefficient in the second row is smaller than the leading coefficient in the fourth row, so we can subtract the second row from the fourth. It's tempting to switch the fourth row, which has leading coefficient 1, up to the second row, but we're trying to avoid switching rows. But since that leading coefficient is 1, if we subtract 12 times the fourth row from the second row, we'll end up with a 1. And now we can use the second row as a pivot to clear out the entries below the pivot. And again, because we didn't switch any rows and we didn't multiply a row by a constant, the determinant of the new matrix is the same as the determinant of the original matrix. Now we'll subtract 8 times the fourth row from the third. We'll subtract 3 times the third row from the fourth. We'll subtract the fourth row from the third, the third row from the fourth, the fourth row from the third, and now we have a leading entry of one, which we can use to clear out the remaining entries. We have our triangular matrix, and the determinant is the product of the entries along the main diagonal.